just hearing the news that Sam Edmund broke moments ago on this show. Charlie Kernow, a six-year deal. I hope there's a no basketball clause in that contract. No <laughs> basketball. Oh, man. Outrageous. I feel like I've lost you for that. Outrageous. <laughs> what Six is years, going Which on? bit really upsets you. The length. Like, oh. The, what if the money was? What if the money was reasonably similar to five years, but just smoothed out so they could make some other re-signings? Well, that would or make four. that would make it uh, more acceptable. But I just the risk that he's going to have another three year window where he plays fifteen games. Like he played three ga- fifteen games in three years. There, I hope that's not the case. Hey, you know what he's got? He's got incredible timing of when he comes out of contract, Charlie Kern. I reckon the last time he came out was on the back of a big year, maybe. 2018, then didn't do anything, and now he's had a massive year when he's coming out of contract. So well done to him. No criticism towards him or his management, but Carlton they could be in all sorts with their salary cap and their list with the deals that they have given out recently. I'm taking a stance on Fireball Fridays with you, working with you. I'm taking a stance. What is it? Until you declare, and I've got my feelers out at the moment. Until you declare the length of your do you not understand contract signing? Until you declare the tenure. I don't think it's fair do you not to have this have this reverse <laughs> stance against players when you yourself. I'm, I'm hearing it. I'm, I'm, do you not understand, King, that my mm. job has nothing to do with my physical ability? Performance? No, no. no but perform. Oh. I've, I, I've seen you year out of contract spike <laughs> headlines everywhere. Outrageous comment. Yeah, I've had a good year. I had. I got a big statement book this year, right? Yeah, well, Hardly been touched because you've 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 just sort of got the deal done and you've put the cue in the rack in the back. I spoke to Julian Bayard this morning. That's I said, "Look, wrong. I just need I just need a number." I, until you declare that number, how many years you've signed for? I think it's unfair. I'm to happy to do that. I'll, re- I'll reveal that before uh, we finish this morning. I'm more more than happy to put that, <laughs> put my cards <laughs> on the table. Don't you lie to us. Oh no, I won't. <laughs> talk me through. Uh, talk me through St Kilda um, yeah. because I know you know this is on your Friday agenda and you want to put it on there. Well, ten wins, ten wins, and then we stay sit on ten this season. It's really difficult to work out which way the Saints are going. And, and I, oh, it's such a tough competition when you do get stuck in the middle. Mm. I thought they did some clever things with some draft picks over the last couple of seasons, but they find their list in a real hole at the moment. Let's have a listen to what Nick Rewalt had to say had to say last night on AFL 360. I'd be cutting and, and cutting pretty hard. I, I think it's critical that they bring in more young talent into that into that group because you look at the sort of under twenty four. You know, there's, there's Max King, there's, there's Winhager, there's, um, there's Owens and a few of these guys. And, you know, a lot of those guys are still unknown quantities. So that's, that's where the organic growth got to come from. And they haven't got many of those players. So I'd be, I'd be trading out some of your established players. So by all reports, it sounds like Brad Hill is a player that's, that's, that's up for grabs. Uh, and maybe he's part of the Clarkson discussion for that next club. Um, outside of that... I mean, who are you really going after at St Kilda? I mean, what would Gresham get? What would Billings get? It's the same. It feels to me like it's the same discussion, almost Groundhog Day again. Mm. Uh, we've, I thought we had this chat last year. Yeah. I thought we had this chat the year before. So if you were Brett Ratton, though, and you're you're under the pump, like regardless of the fact you've just re-signed, you, you, a, a poor start to the year next year, and you could be in a similar position as Ben Rutten. If, you, if you're Brett Rutten, you're not going to want to trade out any experience. You're not going to want to reset, cut deep, go to the draft, set yourself back a number of years. And that may be the right thing to do for the football club. But mm. if you're the coach of the club, you're not going to agree to that, surely. Because he won't survive. Um, he won't survive. Well, I think you. I think he's big enough and brave enough to make the best decisions for the football you club. Think? I don't necessarily subscribe to that. I think clubs, uh, clubs and coaches have done that uh, across the journey regularly. Yeah, I think he would have a belief that he has got the group that can challenge next year. Now, we're hearing they're into Jordan Degoe, and that's been a, a reason that the, the review. So they clearly see it differently to Nick. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise you wouldn't be entertaining Jordan Degoe, though, would you, if it was about getting draft well, picks and talent in? I think it becomes more important to get a Degoe. So you've got a base of 10 wins. So you're looking for a player that can take you from 10 or 11 to 14 to 15. But you're not going to get that if you cut and go to the draft. 
I'm, I'm not. That's a, they were Nick Rewalt. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Thoughts. I wasn't saying they were I, yours. I think the base of what they've got's reasonable. Okay. I I wouldn't be cutting it because okay. what do you cut it to? You go back to a yeah, seven, no, eight wins, nine yeah, win season. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I'm add that spark player. They haven't got that Jordan to goey type. I think these players are a greater commodity than what um, the outside world gives them credit for. Mm. You're looking for a guy that can win you two, three more games. That's that's all you need. And then you're in, you're entrenched in the finals, and you're on the door of top four, if not in there. That's, I think that's the discussion. How do you win those next three games? Saints. Not the 10, the next three. Saints fans, happy to hear your thoughts on what is going on at your footy club. Another season of no finals, one 736 736 Kingy, I disagree with you on the Blues. I, now, I preface this by saying I only saw the social media breakout, so don't shoot me down that I didn't listen to the full in-depth conversation that you had. But you don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's a disaster if Carlton miss. No. I do. Yeah, what? What? Why? Give me your logic. Well, they ha- they you need at some point in your career you need to experience what September is about, and to go eight and two, to go ten and four after round fifteen, you, you're not going to get. Who knows if you'll get a better opportunity than that to lose your last four games and miss the finals when you just had to win one of that last four, and one of those games was against the youngest team in the competition. That's Adelaide. You're leading by eight points with three minutes to go against a very good side in Melbourne, and you somehow find a way to cough that up. I think it would be a sporting choke if they'd missed. And to, to look at the numbers of some of their players, like a Cripps and Walsh and Wiedering and Mackay and Kuhn, they haven't played finals. I, I think they need to taste September. I really do, to launch them next year. Now, you may disagree, and you can tell me why. Well, I, I just don't think there's any one position to come from from the previous year to win the flag. So you don't I think it's, subscribe that it helps to experience. No, I don't. Not at all. No, I, I don't think it does at all. Melbourne finished ninth in twenty twenty, one in twenty twenty one. But they'd experienced it the year before. Sorry, in twenty eighteen, they'd be. And like, had that, that experience that, go? Well, well, they made a prelim final. And had the, that experience go? Well, that was awful. But you could argue that that helped them. So I'm, there isn't any one path to a premiership. I get that, but I reckon the finals experience helps. I reckon it's the greatest falsehood in footy, finishing eighth and getting belted in, a, in one final is, is a better result to finish ninth, having come from where they've come from. They've, re, they've rebuilt strategy. They've rebuilt personnel. They, they are charging forward, Carlton. In my eyes, it doesn't matter to me whether they finish eighth or ninth because I don't think it brings anything this year anyway. But the standards that they've now set as a football club, the method, you can see it. It's, it's fingernail deep at the moment. There's a lot of tactical nows to go into another off-season. So they had so much to correct. They could only do so much with the experience that they had. Savage by injury. I know, I know mm, people say, mm. you're making excuses. I'm not making excuses. I'm giving you a reason as to why it doesn't worry me if they finish eighth or ninth in terms of winning a premiership. It's not about playing finals. It's about winning flags. Mm, I think the experience of tasting what it's like to have Crips lead them out to a big final, and who they can win a final. Why couldn't? They, why would they get smashed if they? I, they I, won't be winning a final. There's, I, I think, you they, think they would. Well, if they beat Collingwood that, this week, and I don't know if you know, who, who it's big. They have unknown. to beat them to make it. Don't yeah. They? Under, well, well, there's a few technically. Yeah, there's te- a technicality. There's, there's yeah. a way you can get out yeah. of it, but. Um, so they would play. They would probably play Brisbane in Brisbane, Fremantle in Fremantle. Yeah. I think they can. Or Melbourne. Yeah, well, we saw they were. They were You're going to give eight, them any chance? Well, they were eight those? points up against Melbourne three week, a week ago with three minutes to go. Of course, I'll give them a chance. Of course, I'll okay. give them a chance to beat Frio. So I just think the experience of being there is is important. Now, others would disagree, but Blues fans, how important is it for you, for Patrick Cripps after, I don't know, eight years in the system and 157 games to finally play in a final? I think uh, it's important. The fallout for the others, Kingy, this weekend. Um, take us through what you what you're thinking with Melbourne, Brisbane, and the Dogs if they stuff it up this weekend. Well, I just I've just never seen a bigger home and away game than tonight. I just think to fall out of the top four so late, you can't. In my opinion, you can't win it outside the four. Mm. It's so difficult to win four big finals in succession in September. Given you may have to travel, you may not. It's irrelevant whether you do or you don't. You're playing the very best. Uh, on their home home dig, so for Melbourne to fall out, I, I just wonder what the, the 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 fans would think. Okay, are they just that happy with twenty twenty one? It doesn't really matter. Are they satisfied? Yep. The, well, the, every fan probably is with winning a flag. Brisbane, what would it mean for Brisbane? Who would be? Who would be? It'd just be another year, another year with a little cross through it. Yeah. 
Bulldogs to miss miss the eight. You know, uh, there's, there's there'll be a lot of discussions had there. Is it is it system? Yeah, you know, is there is their coaching panel absolutely the best they can offer this playing group? Mm. And I think that's a that's a deep discussion that we need to have over the next few weeks. Yeah, massive, massive. Because I'm I'm completely in agreement with you. You can't win it. No one's winning it outside the top four. They're just, they're just not winning it outside the top four this year. I know it's been done before, but. It's not happening this year. I want to play you this because Ed Langdon caused chaos and carnage ahead of that game against Collingwood, the all duck, no <laughs> dinner comment. This is more savage. And for those that aren't in Adelaide, you may have missed it. But firstly, let's hear from the vice captain, Ollie Wines of Port Adelaide, and then the captain and what they had to say about Adelaide as a club. There's certain things about that football club that, that I don't like. I think it's just the DNA of the club and, and what they're about and um, the sense of entitlement that they sort of have. But um, I'm proud of my football club and and uh, we're going to be doing everything we can to knock them off. Yeah, absolutely. Like There's some good people within the club, but as an organisation, they're um, entitled and arrogant. Entitled, <laughs> arrogant, the DNA of the club. They don't like the place. I've, that is savage. <laughs> Isn't it? I love it. It's I great. It's brilliant. It. Yeah, I, and I hope the playing fraternity track towards this rather than shy away from it. Well, it's fan, it's it just creates such theatre, doesn't it? I didn't think we'd ever see it again after the Braden Maynard absolutely smashed Ed Langdon. The club wasn't happy with it. I wonder whether that has been a club strategy to to sell the joint out to build the game up. Robbie Gray's last game because. Or whether that's the words of others at the club, because strange that two players in separate interviews would use basically <laughs> the identical language. So has that come from above? Oh, yeah. You think Ken well, said I'm this. speculating. Well, often, Your man. Well, often we do see players repeat language from yeah, the coaches. Right. Now, whether it's Ken or whether it's others involved at the footy club, I just thought it was really interesting. I don't mind it. I think it's the best rivalry in the game. We'll wait and see whether there's a response. From Adelaide on Saturday night, he is the coach of the Hawks, Sam Mitchell. Mitch, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Looking forward to next Wednesday for Sis to uh, get his all Australian. <laughs> I think Kingy's being. I think he just wanted a bit of media to say to leave him out deliberately. He's played on the best forward almost every week. He gets sat on half the games. Absolutely ludicrous not having him as first picked in your defence in your team, King. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. We all see it differently, Sam. We all see it differently. How have you seen – before before I ask you your, your answer, Simon Goodwin was quite strong yesterday in his support for Ben Rutten. Let's have a quick listen to what Simon said, and then I'll get your thoughts. The one thing you want in our industry is respect, and I don't think Ben's been afforded that. I think it's been pretty poor how he's been treated. How do you see the situation, Sam? And I think it's quite—I uh, think that's really encouraging for a for a coach to come out and and support his own in, in the dire situation that is at Essendon Football right, Club right now. How do you see it? Yeah, I predicted you might uh, ask me about that, and I thought that um, Simon Goodwin actually nailed the answer. So you know, I think you do want respect and the amount of work that um, Ben Rutten. I don't, actually don't know Ben Rutten is one of those guys that haven't crossed paths with in, in the game. Very often, and I just, you know, I think everyone, regardless of your thoughts on what should happen, just feels for him and the situation he's been put in. Is there more, are you supported well enough as coaches from the league? Um, it's, well, I mean, I think a lot of it, a lot of it is around your, your football club, of course, and, um, you know, the Coaches Association um, ring around and make sure you're, you're feeling okay. And I haven't had any issues to this point very early in my, in my time, and, um, certainly, I've I felt I've had the support I've needed through my very short journey. Is it tenable, Sam? I'm j- I'm just asking this. I, I have no idea what it, the pressure that you guys are under week on week, and, and clearly, as you just said, you've only been in the chair for for twenty odd weeks. It, it, would it be tenable to ask Ben to coach next year, given what he's been through in the last fortnight? Uh, I think you'd have to know a lot more than I do to be there. But I think there's a lot of things. I, a great mentor of mine, David Parkin, has always said to me that once you've been in the role for a while, you have to be able to reinvent yourself. And I think if you if you have that capability as a coach to to reinvent what you're doing, then that means um, you can you can start again. It might be a it might be a challenge, might be might take some reasonably difficult conversations, um, but I, I don't see it as untenable from my position, but I'm far away from what Essendon are doing. 
And I want to ask you about some of the bigger games we've got this weekend, and particularly tonight. I think the, the biggest uh, impact on the Premiership is obviously finishing in the top four, the two teams tonight, the two combatants, the Brisbane Lions and the Melbourne Football Club. As a coach, with your planning against these two teams, all of our listeners are going to be watching tonight, football lovers, watching the screen. What will they see on the screen, in your opinion, with your knowledge, that they'll get an indication of the games tracking one way or another? Something something with some detail, if you can, not just, obviously, the scoreboard. Well, it's, it's both, both of these teams are so clear in the brand of football that they play. Uh, you know, there are very, very few changes, and I think you've seen that. Um, you know, Melbourne are... I think no one is sort of second bottom for scores per entry, but they're number one for entry. So the way that they want to play with that, um, you know, long sort of kick into the pocket, which is very difficult to, to rebound from, but it's also more difficult for them to score. So I think I think the inside 50 um, potency of Brisbane will actually be the important thing. I suspect that uh, Melbourne will have a lot of inside 50s, but it'll be about turning that into scores. And for for Brisbane, can they be potent when they have their opportunities to go forward? So um, efficiency for Brisbane's inside 50s would be a key stat that I would be looking at. Can Richmond win the Premiership, Mitch? You saw them firsthand last week. Ooh, Could they do right. something extraordinary? Well, they're, they're certainly potent. Um, we played them last week and, um, you know, we had... There was too many problems in the game to be able to fix it up. They were just a bit too good for us on the day. And um, you know, if they continue to play in that manner, you know, we're not we're not a top four side just currently at this point. But mm. they they will cause a lot of teams a lot of trouble if they continue to play in the form that they are. I think Lynch. I know Lynch kicked eight against us last week, but he's taken apart some very very good players in this last month. I don't think he's ever been in better marking form certainly. And kicked eight straight would have been nice if he. Um, had a had an off day, but um, I think that if they continue to play, it's a it's a long run for them. Would be the only thing I would say. Mm. So they've been in really good form for about. I know they've lost a couple of games, but for about five weeks they've been playing really high level. Um, so they've got another five to go. So to sustain it for ten weeks is reasonably difficult, and they can't afford to to drop one now. So. Um, I think they've had enough winning, haven't they? I thought it was interesting you moved the All Australian lock out of his position last week and put him on ball. I, I found that, I found that curious, Sam. Have you got another wild card move for us this week? Yeah, well, I mean we've got three key defenders who you know James Blank. Um, we rested him the week before, but he's going on really well in his you know, first handful of games. Emerson Jekka's just moved down back. He's a 197 key defender. And then we've got Denver Grudger-Brass as that third tall, who's been going along really nicely for us. So um, to play all three of those plus James Sicily, um, it was just going to be a little bit cumbersome in the back end. So um, we decided to, to try something different with Sis. And because Sis gets sat on so often, um, having another string to his bow, we thought was going to be important for the future. So... Hence the hence the change last week. Some of it worked, some of it some of it didn't. But in the last game this week, I think we um, you know we got t- uh, a bit of a touch up in the second half in particular against the Bulldogs last time. So um, you know it's all going to be around our midfield potency and being able to keep up with their prime movers. I think we're fascinated by what you do in the off season and how you look to get better. And, and Luke Bruce's name being thrown up not for the first time. Mitchell's in the same boat. Gunston as well has been speculated about. But how are you looking to address your first sort of postseason exit interviews, telling players that they may not get a contract next year? It's going to be a challenging time for you, and the first time you've done it. Yeah, I've actually done all the um, all the exit interviews already. So really? we've sort of been knocking those over the last couple of weeks, which is. Um, I think it's been really strong. And I think, you know, the days of this one one interview at the end of your season to assess everything, are, mm. certainly for me, that's not how I operate. I try to keep them in the loop pretty. You want no surprises in those interviews from my point of view. So um, we've already done those. And obviously, any delistings or list changes, that'll happen after, you know, it's a really interesting time. Around 23, we've got, um, you know, 20-odd players who are super excited just for this week and know their season's over. We've got another 15 who are, um, going to um, going to Box Hill, and they're excited for a finals campaign. We've got Ben McAvoy, who's playing his last ever game, and we've got a bunch of guys who don't know where they're at. So um, it's a really interesting um, week, and all of those conversations happen after this week um, around list management and all that sort of thing. 
So that fascinates me, Sam, and I, I understand the logic, and I think it's common sense that you would have an awareness through the course of the season where you're at with the senior coaches' thoughts and the, the club's thoughts. I think that's that's just where things have got to. But how many players would be representing – Bob, don't give us specifics, but how many players roughly would be, one, fighting for survival on the list in this round 23 clash or already know that they're, they're probably likely to move on? Oh, I mean, it's up to their own self-awareness. I mean, we've got 13 guys who are who are out of contract. So there's 13 um, who are thinking something. But, I mean, some of those are, you know, Jack Gunston and Ben McAvoy. So they probably know um, what they're doing. And they know, in Ben McAvoy's case, he knows that it's his last game. In Jack Gunston's case, he knows he's going to be playing again. He's just got the decisions to make on what that looks like. And then there's a bunch of young guys who, you know, aren't sure the way the way things fall. So... You know, we try to be pretty transparent and there's no decisions being made at this point around, you know, definite. So they continue to play it out. We always, we have a great example at our club where Dylan Moore was uh, pretty pretty much delisted going into the last game of 2020 and, um, you know, had a really strong game against the Gold Coast Suns and pulled a Brownlow vote and ended up being the last player contracted in that offseason and now he's one of our prime movers. And what about your coaching department? They're pretty brand new sort of thing. Will you look to make any changes there or are you pretty happy with what you've got? Um, no, pretty happy with what we've got. We've um, potentially got some movement around the football department. It's, um, you know, it's a, it's a big organisation and, and Rob McCartney, our footy manager, um, I never realised how important that, that role was until probably this year. So, um, you know, we're doing a lot of work in the off-season for, for planning for the future and making sure that we've got the best people in the best positions and and, you know, we really want to make sure we've got strong people around our players. We've got a really developing list who we think are going to be pretty special in a year or two. And we, they, they deserve the very best people around them. So we need to make sure we've got them. Hey, we've absolutely loved having you on this year and your insights. Any chance yes. we can get you on in a fortnight to just be an analyst for us and have a look at the finals? Would, would that Bali be something we could interest life, you in or not? <laughs> Pull side somewhere. Uh, oh. Are we are we kicking around? We can we can discuss that. I'm right. sure. Uh, I'm sure it'll be great. it depends what happens on Wednesday. If this isn't in the team on Wednesday, we're never talking again. <laughs> yeah. oh, hey, what are your thoughts? Do we need wingmen in the All Australian team, Mitch? Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, definitely. You. So genuine like wingmen and genuine half. And can we please have some genuine half forward? Well, I yes. just want. I want a couple um, of wingmen. I want the. I want the thank names. You. I want the thank names you, Mitch. from you. Excellent, Sam. Excellent. All right. <laughs> we'll just um, yep. <laughs> Langdon, Langdon's one, okay. one for you. Harry Morrison, all right. Us. Harry, Harry Morrison, all Australian. Interesting. Yeah, Takeoff take has been very good. Yeah. All right, Mitch. We'll see, see what Genuine we can do. Doing more. There's a name for it. Yeah. Okay, you're a big fan. We are a big fan as well. Uh, uh, we'll hopefully speak to you in a, in a fortnight. Good luck you, on the weekend against yeah. the Western Bulldogs. Uh, they feel like they're a, a big shot to cause an upset there and cause some carnage for the dogs.